Hello guys and welcome to a new Stir Division 2 video today by me Vulcan. Today I have for you game 2 of a best of 5 between Under the Sea and Gonzo in the grand final of the Season 5 playoffs of the Stir Division 2 League. Today they are playing on Zabudzin and on our left in the red team playing on the allied side we have Gonzo using the 3rd Guards Tank Corps and the balance deployment type. And on our right in the blue team also playing on the allied side we have Under the Sea using the second armoured French and the vanguard deployment type. Please remember of course that all the games were played before the Burning Baltics DLC and the latest range changes. So Under the Sea going for the second armoured French once again he had a lot of success with that against Gonzo in the last game. I feel like Ocean North is certainly a map that really helps the Shermans and Half-Track play uh, because you can kind of use the light cover that's on that map to your advantage. But Zabutsin is a much more open map. So I feel like those M4s and the Half-Tracks become a lot more vulnerable to AT and uh, either larger tanks or just tanks that can kind of match up to the Shermans. So under the sea, yeah, going with what he's comfortable with, had a lot of success with it, of course took the victory from Gonzo, uh, but was coming under a lot of pressure towards the end of that game, uh, but ultimately took the victory. Gonzo, third guards tank core. Now I have no idea how this got through picks and bans, but Gonzo's got the third guards, and it is arguably one of the best divisions in the game uh, in 1v1. He's playing it balanced, and that means that he's going to have a lot of firepower in the late game. The third guards does get access to IS-2s. Uh, so those could certainly dominate this map from places like on the bottom here, from the high ground. And I guess just in general, like in the center of the map here, can just completely block off roads and really put down a lot of uh, pressure with an IS-2. IS-2s you don't see very often in 1v1 because of them being very expensive and quite slow, like quite vulnerable to ambushes and so on, uh, which you see a lot more in 1v1. So I don't think we'll see one like really that early on. Uh, most likely Gonzo is going to go for the Sherman play, uh, which is you know a lot more standard with the third guard. So let's have a quick look at what's going down. We do see the M4 there with the two Gavardia in the M2A1 half tracks, Tanker Dasaniki, Los Vidka, Leader and a PTRS. Uh, further down, we've got the PTRS 45mm T gun, Tankos, and the Razvedka. And then you've got the GV Comrati, two Razvedka, three Gavardia. And on the bottom side, it's going to be another Sherman, two Tanker Desaniki, the Ognemachiki, Aziz 3, GV Comrati, and the Razvedka. Over on the side of Under the Sea, on the top side here, he's got a 30 cal leading up a 57mm AT gun. He's got the M8 Spy, Nueve. He's got the bazookas in there, Flammenwerfer. Sorry, not Flammenwerfer. I'm so used to seeing the uh, the blue team be axes. <laughs> of course, just flamethrowers. Um, Nueva. And then further down, we've got the M10, the M4A2, two voltages and another flamethrower. And on the very bottom side, it's going to be three more flamethrowers with the sappers, voltages, bazooka, M8 spy, M4A2, Grupa spy in an M20 and another AT gun. So relatively spread for Under the Sea. He doesn't really have as much of a concerted push coming through. He's got his armor in the center, uh, but not too much infantry to really secure the town. Uh, meanwhile, Gonzo doing a similar thing. I am very surprised that he didn't put a unit on the very bottom side of the map though. Wow. Yeah, looks like Under the Sea is going to just push a lot of stuff in here. And Gonzo hasn't even placed like a single unit heading to this forest. Which is usually something that you do see, but might be mainly because of the roads. So in this case, like Gonzo doesn't actually have a road that leads directly from his spawn to this area of the map. And that can be a bit awkward to deal with. So he probably just wanted to focus on other maps. Like the 45 mil here. Getting into cover, uh, we'll be able to engage the M8, and the M8 does have to be careful. This is on the old patch, so 
the, the AT guns like the 45 mils do have 2000 meter range, which can definitely do a lot of damage to units like the M8 Spy, which only has 15 millimeters of frontal armor. Uh, the flamer here, not really getting it smoked down, so it's going to get taken out. 45 still focusing on the top. Oh, that's a nice kill for the 57. Takes out one of the half tracks, takes out two of the half tracks. I think that was two units, like the Razvedka maybe, and then the Tanko de Saniki, I think, died there. It might have been two Razvedka. But either way, that is a really, really bad start here for Gonzo. It's not looking good. Uh, got two Gavardia now coming in for this bottom side. He needs one to support the Sherman if he's going to try and make a little bit of a play. But so far, a really good start here for Under the Sea. He's got into position well. He's sitting on a 14 to 10 flag lead. And even if Gonzo kind of pushes back this one, he's still going to be at 13 to 9. He's not going to hold this one for long, so I'm kind of discounting that. But yeah, great positional advantage for Under the Sea at the start. But he, of course, does have the Vanguard deployment type. So he is going to want to keep pushing just needs to decide where he wants to do so. At the moment, neither player really doing too much. I feel like Gonzo's kind of waiting here for Under the Sea to make a play and then potentially go for a counter-attack. Resvidkas, pretty nice. They do have those bazookas to help with the half-tracks. Did the infantry push forwards with those? I like the, the composition of forces actually here from Gonzo. He's focused a lot on these Radvedka and you don't really get much on a card. You usually get like three, I think, on a card in phase A. So he must have at least two cards of these Radvedka. And he's used them to accompany his Gavardia as basically, you know, bazooka squads. Glorified bazooka squads. And we've got the IS-2 here coming in. Interesting to see that quite early on, but Gonzo obviously not under much pressure at the moment, so quite happily just going to roll that onto the field and provide a lot of pressure on this top side. A little bit of an engagement here, the M5 half track trying to move up. Will it get taken out? Nope. The Ziz 3 gun jammed the M4A2. That APCR trying to get through the front armor of the M4A2 will struggle a little bit at range. The bounce there. If the M4A2 can get out of range in time, it can. I think the this 3 is a little bit in cover there, so... Not going to be able to continue its engagements. M5 half-track helping hit those Radvidka. I guess the Radvidka revealed themselves engaging the voltages. Got to be a little bit careful with that. The Resvidka, of course, do have the 7 SVTs, so they do like to engage at range. There is an off map coming in from under the sea. Looks like the Sherman here is hitting the voltages hard. We've got to remember at this point in the series, under the sea is 1 0 up. So, if under the sea wins this game, which it looks like he's in a good position to do so at the moment. Gonzo is going to have to go three wins in a row to take the final, which is quite a large task uh, in, in a best of five. Nice couple half-track kills there. Sherman and getting into a good position to do some damage. Great off-map going to come down here. Going to hit all of those squads. Under the siege, getting ready with the M5 half-track here. I assume to rush in and surrender some stuff. But at the moment, yeah, Gonzo... Obviously, Gonzo can't really be too aggressive early on with a balanced deployment type third guards because he's most likely got quite a lot of weight into, like, B and C in his deck compared to Under the Sea. But here we go. Gonzo going to run away with all of these units. Will the Resvidka get spotted? Yep, they all will, and they're going to get surrendered. That's a pretty big push coming through here. If these half-tracks can surrender the rest of these Gavardia, then he's probably going to take a second flank here. Oh, nice kill from the M10 as well onto the M4A1. Oh, two Gavardi go down to that half-track. Zappa is currently doing a lot of damage to these Gavardia on the bottom side as well. Under the sea. 
doing very, very well at the moment. But there is a large concentration of forces from Gonzo on the top side. We can't discount that. But currently, the positional advantage is way in favour of Under the Sea. Cavardia looks like they got some support from the M4. Zappa is being forced to fall back, but now the M4 of Under the Sea comes over. And is going to do the same thing. So Cavardia will probably end up going down here. Still only 14 to 10, though. And that's quite important. Because as long as... Gonzo isn't bleeding too many tickets early on. He's probably going to be quite comfortable in this game. The half tracks have moved up on the top side, and it looks like they've managed to gain this flag. See how long that lasts. The Cavalli is going to be trying to get across to get in position. It seems like the two M4s have been brought in here. They did clean up a lot of the half tracks that broke through and took a lot of ground. So Gonzo trying to find solutions. To the positional advantage that Under the Sea has. Currently is M4 getting pretty lucky here, I feel. It's a 2v1. Yep, there we go. Does go down. This is 3. Trying to get the better of the M4A2. Like that will survive for the time being. There's 3 now. 3 M4s now on the bottom side. Under the Sea still maintaining the advantage due to these flags further down here. Because Gonzo has really started to make a move on the top side. He's got his Gavardi pushing forward. He's got the Refitka following up. Tankos have managed to sneak into this heavy cover as well. They will probably be able to take out the flamethrower unit there. This three now moving across. I don't know where that this three is going. Maybe it's going to try and support this town against anything that's trying to shoot these Refitka and so on. But ultimately, we'll want to take out these half tracks under the sea, kind of. Trying to scout there with the M5 half track. Moving it up to see if anything fires at him. Of course he does know there's this 3 is here. He's seen it the whole time. So it's not it's a bit of a surprising move in my opinion. But now an M5A1 pushing on the Zis 3 is a bit of a different matter. Although he's just gonna let that die. That's uh, not too great. The voltages could have unloaded there and definitely started firing at the Zis 3 and done quite a lot of damage, I feel. So, a bit of a mistake coming through there from under the sea, and the bombing strike from the IL-2 hits the AT gun nicely. Sherman going to be able to take out the flamethrower unit. Oh, nice side shot there from the 57. Don't think he's going to get away with doing that again as the IS-2 shows front armor. Wow. <laughs> Would have been uh, interesting to see an IS-2 going down very early there. But uh, that is the same IS-2, I believe, that was further up. Just trying to look at these burning wrecks, see if I missed anything. I believe that is definitely the same one. You're just moving it around the corner here to engage the M4A2 and the M10. And just push back any armoured support that Under the Sea has. So, Gonzo now keeping up the aggression, which is very balanced deployment type quite risky in the early game. Like, obviously, you can still make some ground. Ooh, nice kills there. I believe the IS-2 took out the M4A2, and the IL-2 killed the AT gun. I'm gonna leave one unit of voltages in the center, and it's amazing how quickly Gonzo's managed to recover his position. Givardi's gonna be pushed back by the M4A2 and the M5A1. I think the IS-2 just is so good for just bullying these tanks. Like, all, IS, all this IS-2 needs to do now is move down and start engaging these M4A2s and Under the Sea is not going to be able to utilize much of this power to continue to make ground. And I feel like Under the Sea, you know, he had a really good start, a really good positional advantage, but then he just kind of stopped. And Gonzo has had plenty of time to think about how he's going to recover and he's managed to get some significant units on the map. Like, because there was no pressure, Gonzo could afford this IS-2. And that's a big deal. Like, uh, uh, getting an IS-2 on the field this early, if he can get a good couple kills, a good few kills with this IS-2, it's going to really whittle down the effectiveness of the early game of Under the Sea. And in a Vanguard deployment type, you don't want that to happen, obviously. 
Another IS-2 coming. We've moved into Phase B. IS-2 1944s are on the way. And they are the upgraded IS-2s with the extra frontal armor. They are very, very hard to penetrate. As long as they are not showing side armor. This three here trying to get good shots onto the M4A2. That's going to be a bounce. Would have been a kill, I think, if it had penetrated. So Under the Sea use, like, using the half-tracks again. I like the way Under the Sea kind of concentrates his half-tracks. He keeps them in like little groups. He doesn't just send them in like one by one. He does occasionally, but for the most part when he's trying to make concerted efforts, he will keep them in like ones or twos, which is much better because it allows them to pin down uh, things that they come up against a lot quicker. Uh, this 85 did unload here and uh, just kill an M10. The M4A2 and the other M10 are going to continue to engage it. So the 85 might end up going down, which would be a bad trade. And these M5 half-tracks are pushing through here as well to engage that. Yeah, Gonzo is going to potentially lose that quite easily. Which is uh, really quite costly, honestly. But the Zis 3 kills off the M5 half-tracks. Got the Shermans trying to maintain... A long range engagement against the M4A2 there. This M2A1 half track is just going to try and get into cover. These M4A2 is being very aggressive though. These uh, volunteers are going to have to cover him. Now we've moved into phase B. Under the Sea really needs to secure his victory. And he's got 9 minutes and 40 seconds left until Gonzo loses. So in that time, Gonzo's got to try and, you know, balance things out and really get things back in his favor like clean up a lot of these probing attacks uh, that under the sea is making establish a solid front line and then start to push back now, of course under the sea knows probably that if he doesn't win by the end of phase b or like at least early phase c he's gonna have a really hard time in this game the volunteers getting into a good position but the m402 getting killed there by the zis3 the use of zis3s in this game has actually been pretty vital on this bottom side for gonzo he's done really well to keep the m482s at bay and i mentioned how the previous matchup on orsha favored the half tracks and the shermans and you can see that kind of coming into effect here with the half tracks being able to put a lot of pressure on the light cover but in the open the M4A2s have a much harder time because they've got to be a lot more careful about side shots uh, from AT guns and so on or just close range ambushes M4A2 pinning down the volunteers is nice going to be a quick surrender there oh nice snipe though onto the reinforcing unit of infantry on the bottom side IS2-1944 is moving up to cover this area from the high ground. It's going to definitely make things difficult for these tanks. Oh, there's the IS-2 taking out the M10 in the middle. And you can see that Under the Sea has invested in the M4A-376, one of the one of my favorite looking tanks, for sure. But, unfortunately, that's not really going to be able to do much against an IS-2. <laughs> so, it's a bit of a sitting duck. IS-2 again, oh, misses its shot that time around. Looks like it did take a penetration. Yeah, it did. Something penetrated that. That must have been a side shot again. As it's kind of like attack moving. Well, it's fast attack moving down this road. So every time that it's engaging these tanks. It has to rotate. And in that time it gives it a chance to be side shot. Like there, for example. If that 76 had hit the IS-2 it would have been dead. It didn't. And it died. So that's not ideal, but things are still looking not looking great for Gonzo, but he does still have like two IS-2 1944s and an IS-2 Comrotti on the field. The issue that Gonzo is having right now is his infantry is struggling to make ground against the infantry of Under the Sea. But Under the Sea will have a lot of availability issues in the mid to late game with the French. They're already a division that doesn't have many cards of infantry. And so they get starved very quickly the longer the game goes on. M10 trying to have a go at the IS-2. and just bouncing all those shots. Look at that. Oh, and returns a fire and the M4A2 goes down. 
Every time an IS-2 pops another M4A2, Gonzo is clawing his way back into this game. But I am extremely impressed with how much pressure Under the Sea has managed to put on. He definitely did take like a two minute break. It felt like he just got up and went and made a cup of tea and then came back and was like, oh, there's an IS-2 on the field, I should probably do something. Um, <laughs> that's kind of what it felt like. And I feel like those few minutes might have cost him the game because not being aggressive in those moments allowed Gonzo to get the first IS-2 on the field. That's going to be another kill there for the IS-2 onto the M4. So, yeah, we're now in a position where any armor engagement is pretty futile for under the sea, except from in close range. And at close range, he can pretty much go equal with Gonzo because they both have M4s. The M4A376 might be able to make a bit of a difference. Volunteers, though... They're doing their best to hold on. They are actually doing quite a lot of damage to these Gavardio as they move forwards. And the Sapuers here moving up with the TNT is certainly going to be helpful. Off map might end up killing this IS-2. It has been hit before. Nice bombing strike there onto the Nueve. Going to give a flag back to Gonzo. Another bombing strike coming in down here. That is going to be the IS-2 going down. The Sapuers managed to get the bazooka shot on target there. That was cheeky. I completely forgot that the Sapuers had the bazooka there. Yeah, I just thought that he was moving the sappers in to help with the infantry, but nope. Went for that bazooka strike and landed the shot, and the IS-2 had already been penetrated there due to moving across this road previously. They got the one-shot kill. Very nice. IS-2 is going to back up onto the hill, maintain overwatch. Going to have to wait now for his infantry to move forwards and take the ground. IS-2 in trouble. M4 also in trouble here. It's going to be under a 2v1. And then also the AT gun getting involved. That's going to be the M4 going down. Oh, these Avtos. Oh, that's one of them dead. This one, will it get into cover in time? Just going to unload it. That's definitely going to take a lot of damage in the open. So now the M4A2 is pushing forwards on the top side, but they don't really have much infantry to support them. So these Gavardia are pretty much going to prevent them from moving through there at well, for the rest of the game, until infantry arrives, but I'm pretty sure at this point Under the Sea is running out of infantry. Otherwise, we'd probably see more of it coming in. He's brought in his volunteers, and it looks like they didn't really do the job, and now the Avatars are just going to kind of push through here on the bottom side. They can probably keep making ground. Gonzo realizes that as the salient opens up here. Oh, IS-2 getting another M4A2. This IL-2 still floating about as well. That can easily strafe some of this infantry to help out. Now back to 12 to 12. All we can see here from under the sea, a couple 30 cows coming in. Volunteers, sappers. We definitely did have some infantry of elevability left. I guess maybe it's just... I was going to say income, but income's equal. Don't know. Maybe it was just the overinvestment into the M4A2s that kind of cost him here then. As opposed to the infantry availability as such. Because his infantry got killed off, killed off and he didn't really replace it that quickly. And now Gonzo has a 14 to 10 advantage on this game. He's going to start to clean out the units from the bottom side. He's got the Cavardia moving in there. He's got the Avtos uh, moving up as well. There are three units of flamethrowers, so these units could get pinned down pretty quickly. We'll have to wait and see as the engagement ensues there. This is, yeah, unfortunate for Under the Sea. I think as soon as we started to see uh, like a couple of IS-2s on the field, it was pretty likely that uh, Gonzo was going to be able to... Uh, take away the pressure that the medium armor of Under the Sea presents and therefore, you know, wrap up the game. Because without anything to really deal with the IS-2s, which the French really don't have that much to do so, yeah, he's going to have problems. Like, the only real thing that the French have to deal with the IS-2s is, in fact, the bazookas, probably, or maybe even bombing strikes. 
but ultimately like bombers are quite expensive for 1v1s you do see them occasionally because they can get quite a lot of value out of infantry kills but if you're going to try and bring in like one or two or even three bombers to try and constantly kill an is2 it's going to take a while but it is a solution um the sappers and obviously the bazooka squads individually are a much better choice uh, but you have to ambush the is2 and since you have to be close you're not engaging the is2 at a distance and therefore the is2 at a distance can exert a lot of pressure against your medium armor allowing the player to move forwards with their infantry so that causes you to lose ground and that's ultimately what's happened here the is2 kind of cleaned out any m4a2s that were engaging things from range and that's allowed gonzo to push aggressively with his infantry get these avatos into position and so on the sappers have managed to help clean up the Gavardia here but technically still surrounded on this bottom side as these avatos are in position in these buildings no recon here so the m4a2s will not spot these avatos until it's too late like all of these avatos just like in these cheeky positions further up are actually quite scary because if a volunteer unit ran close to that avato it's just going to get demolished we see the DB coming in here. He's going for the bombing strikes. So, 110 kilogram bomb versus the IS-2. The IS-2 uh, does have some damage on it already. Will this get the job done? It will. DB gets the kill. Now in a situation where those IS-2s aren't damaged, that's pretty rough. But yeah, this IS-2, look at that, just moving through there with the Gavardia. Can just shrug off the shots from the M4A2s. Doesn't have to care at all. Makes it very, very difficult. Like, even at close range, the IS-2s are difficult to deal with. And the main thing here is that there's no bazookas in the form of, like, the Sapiers. And then, even if you did have the Sapiers there, you've still got to deal with all the Gavardia that are supporting. It's quite a concentrated push there from Gonzo. Voltages again taken out from the IL-2. Those IL-2s have actually been chipping away at Under the Sea's forces for quite a while. And Under the Sea is just trying to hold on. He's just trying to get a flag back for enough time that he can win the game. And just keep that tick going uh, so that he can finish things off. But it is quite a lot of tickets and quite a lot of time the Gonzo now has to just kind of finish the job and we're well into phase C so the income disparity of like 55 points per minute is quite apparent and also under the sea of course has likely got pretty low on infantry availability at this point so we're looking at that as well M10 not going to get its turret on target reversing like that so the M4 cleans it up Gavardia DP now coming in. They're going to be able to finish off the sappers. And it looks like the Gavardia DP was like a phase C card in this deck. So, yeah, he's managed to get quite a lot of damage done here. Avto to eventually get surrounded on the bottom side, giving a couple flags back to Under the Sea. But there is still the IS-2 1944 in the open. Will that kill the M4A3? Yep. These IS-2s, they have 12 damage. They will one-shot any tank. And the poor fate of the M4A3 76 is the same. Lovely map. <laughs> it's so beautiful when you zoom in. Off-map vehicle going down. That might look bad, but... Honestly, Under the Sea is just using that as close range fire support now with its machine guns. It's probably already used up the strikes on it, so it's not so much a big deal losing it in that situation. Givadi DP trying to use uh, one of its DP machine guns to take out the 57. Well, that 57's actually got line of sight onto the M4. This 57's got line of sight down the road, so one of the Givadi DP did go down. Gonzo can't be completely reckless here. Like, he can get pretty aggressive with the Givadi, but obviously doesn't want to grind himself down against the uh, 
the Vanguard too much because he doesn't want to give Under the Sea any potential advantage again in this game. Not that Under the Sea is likely to find it because Gonzo probably just has way more infantry anyway. Got the 57 going down there. Another nice kill for the IL-2. Not a single piece of AA actually bought from Under the Sea, but these IL-2s can be very difficult to deal with. I'm not even sure like a Bofors would even stop them from bombing themselves, honestly. You'd have to invest in at least two Bofors at any point. And whilst they have been taking out individual units, I don't think it really made a massive difference over the game. I think the biggest difference really was these IS-2s. Are these IS-2s just being able to like freely move up and engage any tank they come across is just so nice for Gonzo. And he's really, really used it to his advantage. These IS-2 1944s are really, really scary. I'm surprised to see so many of them in a 1v1, honestly, but of course when you get a third guards balanced deck going, that's obviously what you're going to see. 30 count is going to get taken out there. That will probably push the front line back over the Avtos. Vivaldi DP moving up with Avtos onto the ridge here. Oh, a double DB coming in. Bombing strikes. So here we go. I'm pretty sure this IS-2 isn't even damaged. Gonzo's going to try and move away from the bombing strike. So, as you can see, barely a scratch. So, these bombers, whilst they are a solution for dealing with the third guards, um, or like IS-2s, they need to hit the mark. And if they don't, they're quite a waste of resources. Because he could have also gone for the bombing strikes onto the infantry and taken away that support. But uh, it looks like Under the Sea realises that this is very much over. 28 minutes. Gonzo's going to take the victory. 3,505 kills to 2,060 losses. Quite a one-sided affair in terms of the kills and losses, but Under the Sea had a good amount of control over that game for a significant amount of time. I do feel like there was just a little bit of a lull in concentration there from under the sea for like a good few minutes and in those few minutes Gonzo saved enough points to bring in an IS-2 and that, like if there was aggression coming through at that moment I feel like under the sea could have potentially taken even more flags because he just was in such a good position and obviously like hindsight's twenty twenty from our perspective you know, you do have to be somewhat cautious um, because, as I was mentioning, in the open fighting, uh, the M4A2s can get caught out by AT guns. Especially, like, the a good example is, is this 3s on the bottom side. And as soon as you do come out of the other side of the town in the centre of this map, it is very open. So maybe that's also a reason why uh, Under the Sea didn't go for that. But the only way you win with a second, like, or not with the second, but with any Vanguard division is generally by getting a double tick as quickly as possible. So getting to the 15 flag mark. And yes, when you get to the 15 flag mark, you can technically sit on it and just defend from that point forwards and just hope that you can hold on. But ultimately, if you can push even a three tick early on, then, you know, you're laughing. You're going to have a much better time. You, you take away tickets way faster from your opponent. Um, a three tick is quite unlikely in a matchup such as this. Like Gonzo's obviously not going to let that happen if he can help it. Um, so there is that to think about. But I think under the sea kind of sat on like a fourteen to ten when it could have been a fifteen to nine. That's that's basically what I'm trying to get at. And that cost him the five minutes I think that he probably needed. It would have been close regardless. I think, but. I feel like that's where Under the Sea could have pushed a little bit harder in order to win the game. That is a lot of value there coming out of an M4. Multiple half-track kills and the AT gun kill. But check out this IS-2 Comrati. This is the first one that's brought in. We got three of those M4A2s, bunch of half-tracks, good support there. This does pay itself off quite nicely. IL-2, good amount of bombers coming in. Do take out these AT guns. Certainly cleaned up the way for Gonzo to push back. But 
the loss of these AT guns, the reason they don't really matter in the grand scheme of the game is because they're defensive tools for the most part. And when they're being used as defensive tools, like Under the Sea is already lost, right? So maybe there was a 57 early on that was brought in that might have been able to kill a couple of M4s in the initial engagement. Then that would have been technically offensive. But um, because AT guns are generally defensive, like losing them in a matchup where you're playing as the Vanguard side of things doesn't really make that much of a difference. It's more losing all of these medium tanks and medium armor uh, that makes a bit more of a difference. So in this case, the IS-2 killing M10, M4A3, M4A2, this one killing M4A2, M10, another M4A2, M4A3, 76. Just like all of this medium armor getting chewed up and spat out by these IS-2s, super important. Uh, and that was just like the final blow on the top side there to remove the armor in the forest. On the side of uh, Under the Sea, early on did well. Got a nice couple of transport snipes, put him in a really good position. Didn't really utilize that as much as I think he could have. Um, and then like late game, yeah, he managed to finish off the IS-2. Got a couple cheeky side shots onto these IS-2s as he went as well. And the sappers managed to clean up the IS-2 that got side shot in the middle. And then the bomber obviously finished off the IS-2 Comrati on the bottom side. Um, actually, no, it was like further up on the top side. But either way, um, he didn't even, ideally, under the sea, wouldn't have wanted to see those IS-2s for the entire game <laughs> if he was putting on enough pressure. Um, Gonzo might have still saved for one, but then he would have put himself at a, at a disadvantage if under the sea was uh, kind of still pushing forwards quite hard. And that's a trap that I think newer players generally have with larger tanks. Like just because you have a big heavy tank on the field doesn't win you the game. Um, and you saw that there was a moment where like Gonzo had two IS-2s and he was still in a very bad position. He needed to get the infantry on the field to support those tanks in order to actually make ground. So yeah, anyway, very interesting game. You don't get to see the third guards very often because it's banned all the time. Um, in this case, I don't think that Gonzo necessarily showed why it's banned. Uh, Under the Sea almost took him out. Uh, but I think it's also generally not very common to see third guards played balanced as well. Most players who banned third guards previously probably did so thinking that they would have to deal with vanguard deployment type. Uh, because the early push with the Shermans and the, all of the half tracks that the third guards can get can be just as scary as something like the second US or the second uh, French armored and also like the third US. But either way, that is it. A lot to think about there, actually. <laughs> we kind of got a lot out of that game. That was quite nice. Um, yeah, really enjoyed watching that. And honestly, the matchup between these two is fierce. Gonzo is getting put under a lot of pressure and it's good to see i like I, I like that a lot under the sea doing well unfortunately not quite good enough in this one so it goes back to one to one in the matchup we'll have to see if uh well who takes the next game because it's best of five now all to play for once again nobody had a significant advantage basically a best of three from this point on <laughs> all right thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next one Goodbye.